Hello everyone, reporting today for Fun Robotics Network, I'm Ab Haas, and with me here is Team 2265, part of Robots from Romania. They have been absolutely incredible in the Ochoa division at our World Championship. They went 8-2, and two, had a deep run into playoffs, just an absolutely incredible robot. Four motor lift, two servo extension, just so much going on mechanically here. I can't wait to jump into it on Behind the Bot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first. Zutica Robotics offers durable, polished, and anodized aluminum channels now available in several different color options to customize your robot at studica.com slash robots. No rough edges and a versatile hole pattern allow for positioning at multiple angles. Teams in the U.S., you can request a free sample, apply for team grants, and register for 25% off at studica.com slash robots. All right, guys, I want to start actually with your deposit. Walk me through the decision behind the four motor lift. Did you have it the entire season? Did you start with two, then go to three, then to four? How did that work? At the beginning of the season, we actually had a free motor lift, but uh, because we uh, are, we have like a very heavy robot, so with our four motors and the gear uh, ratio, we are able to find a good balance between like torque and speed. So we have enough power to lift up the robot which is very heavy, but also fairly uh, fast sliders. Yeah, do you know how fast your cycles are for, for lifting up when you're doing sample scoring or specimen scoring? So uh, we're on the slower side. Uh, when we're on the slower side, when scoring high baskets, uh, we're not as good because of, of the bottleneck of the slides. But for specimens, the lift gets there in time. Okay, yeah, awesome. And as far as the gears go, I see a lot of 3D printed gears. Did you have any issues with those? Did you do something special when printing? How did that work? So uh, for the gears, we use herringbone gears with a high module, uh, two, mod 2, and uh, they haven't been breaking up for us this season. Uh, moreover, we were using metal gears in some parts of the robot, but uh, when the teeth were uh, skipping, we switched to plastic ones for herringbone and we hadn't had any issues with them. Awesome. Yeah, now talking about the deposit mechanism a little bit over here, I see this just incredible four bar linkage. We saw something similar from Hyperion last year, but it's not the exact same. Walk me through the design here. Uh, so this design was inspired by 5356 star beast. Uh, they also use a flat beam to make this four bar work. Uh, Hyperion had a one with a belt, but this is simpler and uh, it worked for us this season consistently. Yeah, and so how did you determine that linkage geometry? Was it a lot of trial and error, just purely in CAD? Walk us through that. So uh, we had a lot of trial and error. Uh, the main thing about this, it uh, needs to be a proper four bar. So this uh, holds them to be aligned, uh, the four bar and where the servo goes, and also the center of the gears needs to be aligned with the flat beam. Okay, yeah, and can we see that actuation right now going back and forth? Have you had any issues with speed or how did you balance like speed and torque with this four bar mechanism? Uh, so for this four bar mechanism, we haven't had any issues with speed uh, since the outtakes linkage uh, doesn't need that much speed and we only use one servo for it. Awesome. Now jumping into the intake, I see you have a similar four bar mechanism, but now with two servos. Uh, when did you add that second servo and why? So uh, at Nationals, we only had one servo uh, for this linkage, but uh, it wasn't extending, extending how, uh, quite fast. And we added this second servo, uh, which provided more torque, and it just extends faster than before. Yeah, and when I was looking initially, I thought you guys had three servos over there, but you said that the middle gear is actually for a rev encoder. Why yes. use that rev encoder? Uh, so we use this rev encoder since, because we're not using a motor for our extension, uh, it doesn't have an encoder and uh, we tried using the Exxon ones but uh, we've had uh, software issues with them, they had random oscillations and we decided to add the rev encoder for our extension. Cool. And I hear a lot of like slamming when you're going out with your extension but it's still like very consistent. What is bottom bottoming out? Is it your linkage that bottoms out or is it your slides that bottom out or is it kind of at the same time? Uh, so uh, it's like the, the linkage has this uh, intake linkage has some uh, geometry issues. We fixed it for our outtake, but 
uh, there's some slight issues with the intake linkage. I see, I see. And now talking about the turret over here, I see you moved the motor all the way back here. Uh, was that just a packaging thing or what was the reason behind putting the motor or the servo all the way back? So in the beginning, when we first prototyped this turret thing, um, we would actually um, rotate the intake directly with the axon. But um, this was really risky because the axon could get damaged because when this is really heavy and when it leads down, it would put pressure on the axon. So we found this solution to use a belt in order to, um, to absorb some of the tension. And we also have this um, bearing stack which allows the intake to rotate smoothly. Yeah, I really want to jump into the bearing stack because we've seen different solutions from teams and I think you guys have implemented the bearing stack really well. What advice do you have to teams who are looking to do a similar bearing stack? So, um, it's important to... Sorry. It's important to have them uh, uh, in a circle. So, uh, both the circle, both the bearing stack and the turret have the same center point and the bearings are aligned tangen uh, tangential to a circle. Okay, yeah. And as far as impacts and like absorbing hits and stuff go, have you had any issues with your bearing stack or with 3D printed components or do you think it's all rigid enough? So uh, we had some issues with absorbing impacts with our... My shoes. With our linkage arms. So as you can see, this linkage arm is gray uh, because it's made out of PAGF. Uh, which was recommended to us by uh, Peru from uh, 19066 and uh, it worked better than PLA. It, uh, it was breaking before but we haven't had any issues with this at Worlds. I see. Yeah, now jumping into driver strategy a little bit. You guys have been absolutely killing it with the, same, with the specimens, you know, 19 specimens in one match. Just absolutely fantastic. Uh, when you decided to switch to the side depositing strategy, how did you practice that to make sure it was just super, super effective? So technically, we was inspired by uh, 15972 Techno Z. Uh, we want to uh, make uh, very fast uh, to deposit and uh, push samples, and uh, we. Uh, yeah, I mean that, that makes sense. And as far as sorry. driving goes, is it two drivers or one driver? Uh, it's only one driver. So how do you score the specimen on the on the chamber while also extending for the next sample? Well, I score first the specimen, then I push back a little and then uh, extend the intake and uh, uh, pick up the sample. Yeah, awesome. Now, final thing I want to talk about is the hang. Can you show me? You said you have the four motors for that hang mechanism. What else are you using to do the hang? For the hanging mechanism, uh, it's a simple mechanism. Uh, we only have this four motor gearbox uh, with no PTO or uh, gear changing, and we have the static hooks which are not on bearings, uh, and this ensures that the hanging mechanism is consistent without uh, taking complexity. Awesome, yeah. Part of Robots, thank you guys so much. Just absolutely incredible season, absolutely incredible robot. Can't wait to see what you guys bring to next year's game. Reporting for Fun Robotics Network, I'm Ab Haas, and this is Team 2265, Heart of Robots. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Judica Robotics offers durable, polished, and anodized aluminum channels now available in several different color options to customize your robot at studica.com slash robots. No rough edges and a versatile hole pattern allow for positioning at multiple angles. Teams in the U.S., you can request a free sample, apply for team grants, and register for 25% off at studica.com slash robots. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu first.